I'd like to talk a little bit about how the, the book is organized. So one of the ways the book is organized is we have 64 tools that address four basic learning styles. And one style we call mastery. And in its simplest form, mastery learners are the kinds of learners who learn best step by step. They value clarity, they value consistency, and they tend to pay more attention to procedures than to concepts. And they have a strong need to get things correct, to get it right. They're less likely to think divergently, and they often feel that reasoning gets in the way if I, in fact, got the answer correct. And it is a style of learner. In fact, it even is a style of teacher of mathematics. A second style we call understanding. I'm sure everybody knows another person, but think about this. Think about another person you know who you're trying to understand. Isn't it different? See, understanding means that you can explain and prove. And what we're recognizing in mathematics, just knowing a procedure without being able to explain the reasons, the why, knowing the steps but not understanding the concept, it's a little bit like uh, eating processed food. It will fill you up, but it lacks the nutrition. And we need a mathematical classroom that really has the necessary nutrition in order to reason and to use that language to think mathematically. So the understanding learner learns best, interesting enough, doubt by doubt. They love questions, the questions such as why and how come. They love to explain, they love to prove. They're more oriented to seeking patterns. And they're the kinds of mathematics teacher who loves the question, yes, but why? So even though you've got the correct answer, you've got to deliver on the why. And they're even so annoying is they ask why three times. So that your first why is just the beginning of scratching the surface of understanding. We need students, yes, who have mastered mathematical procedures, but we also need them who understand the reasoning and can think mathematically and use that language to explain and to prove. But it's not enough. See, a third style of mathematics teacher we call the self-expressive teacher. See, mathematics really is a language that is beautiful, that it's aesthetic, that it's creative. It builds our architecture. It makes our art, our music. And to what extent do we bring that to the mathematics classroom? If we just look at it from the logical and analytical and procedural side, we miss a whole set of learners who really learn mathematics and see it in a very different way. So the self-expressive learner learns best, I would say, uh, dream by dream, image by image. Uh, it's interesting, some of these learners are exceptional in geometry but have real difficulty in algebra because geometry is much more visual. Uh, but we need to think about what does the classroom look like for self-expressive learners who want to use mathematics as a form of art, as a way of expressing themselves, thinking divergently, and the aesthetics that is very much a part of mathematics. The fourth style is the interpersonal style. See, each style asks themselves a question. Mastery students say what? What do I have to do? Understanding students say why? What's the value of this? No. Understanding students say why? They want to understand the reason behind what they're doing. Self-expressive students say what if? What if we do it this way? You give a self-expressive student three different ways to do something, they'll find a fourth. But the last style, the interpersonal style, their question is the most provocative and the most challenging because their question is, so what? Of what value is this to me? And unless they see the connection between mathematics and their own life, see, have you ever used a fraction to settle a dispute? Think about a candy bar you had to break into three parts so you and your two brothers didn't argue. You see, mathematics is really life. We use it all the time. And when mathematics teaches brings life to the mathematics classroom and the mathematics classroom to life, those students learn more. So this book has 64 tools, and each of the tools are identified by the particular learning style that you're trying to address. So we're not saying that every mathematics teacher needs to have a separate plan for each student. But what they need to do is they need to have a variety of tools and strategies that they're using as they're going through their lessons to invite each of the students to work in a way that supports how they've learned best.